Okay, so I finally got my hands on one of these things. Now, anyone who, well, I'd say 2010 onwards, maybe, uh, in my area, this thing was being flogged off by a couple of businesses. Um, I, I remember one really sort of pushing it. They did computer stuff and they were like, you can buy one of these. You can take your, you know, your SSD and at the time it would have been a hard drive, you know, plop it in. There's an automatic ejection thing in here, which will allow you to sort of like, but that's probably too small. You know, instead of buying multiple external hard drives, go buy an, a, an internal hard drive. And you can just plonk them in and you, know, you can have multiple of them. You know, it's, it's a great piece of technology. And at the time I'm thinking, yeah, I want one. It's too expensive. So I put it on the back burner, nothing really happened. And then one day, one day to my utter surprise, I got one for free in a junk pile. And now I'm a little bit more um, savvy with this stuff. I thought, yeah, well, you know, it's only USB 2. Uh, just use it, you know, to check hard drives. And then I'm wondering, okay, I don't have the power supply for this, but what do we got in the bottom here? Well, we got the model number and I already opened this, so it's more just me showing and telling. What do we got here? Uh, power supply, five volts, 12 volts, two amps. Found something that might be compatible, but it's not a six pin connector, which is what this is, which is basically just like a PS2 port. And now that I think about it, I'll crap that could have been bad <laughs> oh, no. at the time ps2 was still sort of being used and what would happen if someone plugged the power brick for this into say a desktop computer or a laptop with a ps2 port in it eh, that could be bad try not to give you ideas but i think you can understand where i'm coming from the power brick i've got access to that i i should have gotten but it had four pins. This one's got six. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, yeah, you know, this will be great. This will be great. And then I looked inside of it to try to figure out. So today, that's what we're going to do. Wow, those feet really do stick back down hard, don't they? Now, this is probably a cautionary tale where just because something looks like it's going to be the absolute best, you know, is it really? I, I mean, honestly, the idea and the concept behind this for someone who works with computers or they need to have like a lot of storage devices, you know, your internal hard drives can sometimes be cheaper Sometimes they can be the same price. Sometimes they can be more expensive depending on what you buy compared to buying like the external USB ones. So this, definitely a good concept. Now I do know that you can still buy these. Uh, they're being sold as USB 3 now. And yeah, but I'm not gonna go out and buy one of those. So instead I'm showing the, what I believe to be the model that I freaked out a lot about. Now, with the construction of this, um, it's interesting. So when you try to open it, it's got like these two rails here. Oh, and I'll say this again, I if I haven't already. I've already opened this, so I know what the inside's gonna be like. This glue was from inside, and I'll point out where it was and why I think it was bad. But what I think is good is the way this, this is constructed. So it's got two rails that it sort of pushes in on, meaning it shouldn't easily flex open, which is a good thing. But when you notice, yeah, here we go. So the first thing is that this is held in with one spring. Now, I suppose you could be held in with two springs, but the other thing is that if you break this while trying to take it apart, well, it kind of solves that problem. Now, the other issue I had was this um, multiple cable thing that you have to unplug. So that glue was held here. It was holding these cables down here on this port here, which is bent. Now I am having a, 
I can understand from a budget sort of point of view about having it like this, but I do believe it is kind of cheap that you've got one port here, but you don't have another port here. Cost saving, but still not really the highlight of the situation. And this has been uh, melted in place, so this can't come out, which is probably why this is such a pain in the ass to get out. And you'll see in a little bit why I wanted to do this. That's why I stopped and wanted to get this on film. Oh shit, that is not coming out without getting broken. Um. There it goes. Oh, so it pops off. Okay. Wow, is that all that's really in there? Yeesh. Okay. So reassembling this thing to begin with was a total pain in the ass. And by the looks of this, uh, if you were trying to pull this apart yourself, you could pop it, but I don't really recommend that. Or at least taking that part off. So when reassembling this, um, I had to be a little careful. So what I would find is that getting the PCB in line, you had to sit there and you know nudge it into place on both sides. And then it was fine. But for now, I'm just trying to, oh no, not 2010, this was made 2008. Well, I suppose 2010, anyway. All I remember is that this thing was really popular for a while. So, the issue I had is that I needed to find, figure out some way of getting this to run off a different power supply, or at least re... Well, how to put it? Have this thing so it will run off... Um, re, re, I need to modify a power supply for it. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So what I did was I grabbed my multimeter do, 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 do. And I wanted to find out, well, okay, um, worst case scenario, this thing could potentially kill USB 3, uh, the USB 2 port, sorry, on your computer. So I'm going, well, I didn't really, I'm not going to look up this diagram, but let's go with here. Could this be ground or could this be... All right, so that's ground. Is that connected? No. That's going to be connected. That's not connected. Not connected. So here it looks like we've got maybe 5 volts, or at least the voltage coming in. Nope. What about this capacitor? It goes straight to power side of starter. Oh, here we go. I don't know how visible that is on your screen, so just grab some IPA. So the first thing that concerned me regarding this is how it's got listed on here. Uh, 5 volts in, 5 volts out, 12 volt in, 12 volt out, ground and LED. 
Now I'm assuming that this chip here is going to be able to send a signal to flash LEDs in order to flash this thing. Which, if I look here, it's probably going to connect to these two, which you can, can see that one of the far sides connect to here and it basically links these two up. And yep, yeah, I'm here. What is bothering me? Um, it seems that both the 12 and f uh, the 5 and 12 volts both come here, which you should really only either need like the one voltage rail to control all these LEDs, a signal for the switch, but instead it looks like. 12 volts comes all the way to here and then it goes all the way back to here and that's concerning I mean if the entire voltage to power the hard drive is running through this these cables might be competent enough but that just seems like some bad engineering to me it's like literally finding the cheapest way to do it and just doing it, it may it's actually uncomfortable to think that this is something I could have used. And then the other thing is, and this is the part that concerns me, if I go here and I go here, that's linked. But nothing else is. So, and this is a difficult part when it would come to like designing power for this thing. Um, well, if this is the 5 volt side, this is most likely going to be the 12 volt side. And a paper clip or a bit of wire. Um, do I have something I can use here? This should be conductive. So if I flip this over and I go, well, let's go 12 volt in. But even then you can see that the rails seem to come down through here. So that's the five volt side. Oh, is that the 12 volt side? so it's not that long is it that one I've got a feeling those capacitors might be making me blah, messing things around for me so let's go between here and here well that's conductive Even then, you should be able to trace this out. So it looks like this is a 5 volt side. This is a 12 volt side, but which actual pins does the voltage? Ah, there we go. So it's this bottom one here. This one here does 1 12 volt rail. What about this side? Alright, so the bottom two are 12 volts. Ground. Ground. And then these two here should be 5 volts. So we're going to have our little eyelet. We're going to have one, two, one, two, 
one, two. So when we look at this, so these two are basically the same. Five volts. All right, these two are twelve volts. This is going to be ground, isn't it? All right. Then we look at this side. There we go. You got a good view of that? Hopefully. So that is how the voltage works on this thing. You got your 5 volt rail, you got your 12 volt rail, and you got your ground. Now the power supplies I've usually seen for this, um, something like this, they usually have 4 pins, at which point you've got one 5 volt, one 12 volt, and then you've got your 2 grounds. You don't specifically need that, you should be able to get away with 3, but you know, just how it is. So providing an external power supply for this, well, it's not that difficult to go and buy a PS2 port, uh, PS2 plug. I mean, hell, if you've got an old keyboard you're going to throw out, nick the cable off, and you might get lucky enough to be able to rewire the whole thing. It, it's really not that difficult. Although, depending on the amount of power that these pins could take individually, that's when you're going to run into a problem. But even then, going online or buying from a local electronics store, if you still have one, a uh, PS2 port really shouldn't be that difficult. For me, it's not. Because I know there's a store nearby where I'm actually able to do that. So, my biggest fuss, and as I pointed out before, this is most likely going to be the 5 volt rail. This is also the 5 volt rail. And do these capacitors... They're both 25 volts, so you can't tell with these two capacitors. What about these two? Um, and the capacitance is 47 UF on both. This one here. 47 UF 25 volts, 47 UF 25 volts, GSK as the company. And it's like KI or KL for these ones. So, yeah. Let's see if I can get a good view of that chip on here. Yeah, that's probably the best you're going to get. And on this side, there's really not that much. Same with this thing. You've got what looks to be a voltage regulator, 3.3 volt regulator here, and just a bunch of passive stuff. What concerns me is that all the power uh, coming into this thing to power the hard drive is running through this switch. Uh, that's concerning. Well, at least for me. I just... I mean, a, a transistor or some kind of MOSFET or something to actually control 
um, yeah, as a switch, as an electronic switch, would be a really nice idea, but I'm not seeing that on here. It, it's... They really cheaped out. I am honestly glad I didn't actually get this. So, Big Clive, uh, if you go look at his channel, there is a particular episode where he talks about a USB hub. And the way he puts it, he makes it clear that if the the 5 volt rails should not be linked. You've got in this sort of scenario where you have an external power device and you, then you have your computer both supplying energy to the device. If they're linked and say for instance the uh, power brick sends through, I don't know, by accident uh, full 240 volts that goes into your computer. Your computer is basically going to completely lose it and the components are going to blow up. And then you're going to kill USB on your key on your uh, PC, or even worse, do damage to the five volt rail. And depending on what runs on that, well, your computer might not even boot. So that's bad. So this is bad, at least from my understanding. It's dangerous, not in the sense that it will harm you, but that it could well, you know, kill your computer. And before you say anything about how, oh well, you know, it's never happened. I have a laptop that has a dead USB on it. It still detects that something's plugged in, but USB, Wi-Fi, uh, the Wi-Fi does work, sorry. A webcam doesn't work. Anything that works that would connect through USB doesn't actually function. Which makes me think, has me seriously wonder if that laptop has a, I haven't bothered checking it, actually I should have. But it makes you wonder whether or not something like this happened to that laptop where the 5 volt rail basically got um, a decent strike of high voltage and in this case high voltage something greater than the 5 volts or at least what it will tolerate. So I have seen what could be a potential after effect. And this is really disappointing because this idea is definitely a good one. I mean, if you're in a computer shop and you're constantly, or you're working on computers on a regular basis and you constantly have to pull hard drives out, this is a, this is a very quick system. I mean, it, it's just like slot and you're done. When you're done, you're out. But just the this internal construction of this thing is just concerning. It honestly freaks me out. And, oh, I know, there are going to be people. Sorry. This bit of glue, I think it went on like this. Yeah, you know, something like that. And when I tried to reassemble it, it was such a pain in the ass, and I really cut this cable up, especially down here. So, I mean, that's another fault with this. It, yes, it would have been a little bit more expensive, but you could have had this as a, an actual physical switch. Um, gee, how to do that on this? I mean, I suppose you could have a MOSFET. Uh, you could have the five volts coming in, going all the way up to here to trigger a, uh, a switch that would then activate the 3.3 volt row, which is what I'm assuming that this chip runs on. To then work with, well, sending and receiving the data from the storage device, whether it be an SSD or traditional hard drive, I mean, whatever. It honestly just seems really reckless to be... Yeah, no, um, either a dedicated IC for switching or individual MOSFETs to control the rails. Now, you have 5 volts definitely coming in from here, and you could have that to turn the system on. And then you could solely rely on uh, power to connect to here in order to power the device, where in the way it's been implemented here, both uh, the 5 volt rails are linked and it creates a potential for disaster in the sense of killing this thing, killing your computer, well, not really killing this thing, but uh, this thing would probably go boom and your uh, computer would, well, it wouldn't be very happy if it happened on the 5-volt rail. 
so I'll reiterate, my implementation for this would have been to use some kind of switching um, IC, whether that be just a MOSFET or a transistor, maybe some kind of IC that's designed to act as a switch. That switch be, and the power initialization to, to run this chip to come only from the USB, whereas to power the hard drive or the storage, whether it be SSD or whatever, to solely come from here. Keep them separate. Um, you would probably want to, now you would want to have some way of making sure that the voltage is the same. I mean, that's what, like a Zener diode or, yeah. This is doing my head in. I'm not supposed to be designing this. I'm supposed to be like, this is a piece of shit on the inside. Outside is great. Inside just, no, 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 no. Uh, well, gee. Something I'm actually wondering is whether or not I need, I should reassemble this because I might be able to repurpose it. See, um, I think each of these lines have a capacitor coming off. So I could do one of two things from the, this is going to be the starter. So the actual data is going to be coming from here. I could repurpose this by bypassing this chip, linking directly to each of these, and I have to do it in such a way where I'm not going to accidentally short any of the lines together because that would be bad. And have a starter port at the back here that I could plug into. That way I'd still get the full functionality of the you know automatic ejection part. And this I think nowadays they use like lithium grease or something on here to help keep the action smooth, but <laughs> I just had a stupid idea. Oh, maybe once I get myself set up. All right, well, I'm going to reassemble this then. So yeah, that might actually work for me then, because if I can turn around and simply wire directly to this port, I mean, the power would be like a, yeah, that would be a problem. I'd have to tap in somehow to where the power is and Oh, it might actually be a good idea to remove that IC, remove that voltage regulator, the one, the 3.3 the, the volt regulator. I'd have to definitely go through and remove a ton of stuff from this thing. And then associate where the, uh, really I could tap into the power here. That would help. I just bypass the switch entirely. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it might have actually been designed to be assembled like this. <laughs> you kidding me? Are you bloody kidding me?
You can see I really bent that out trying to get this in, uh, get this apart last time. All right. Let's just be clear, I'm definitely not going to be firing this up and trying it out. I do have another video or something else I want to sort of, um, you know, like, uh, fix. And that's sort of going to lay down to the question of whether or not it did the same thing. Yeah, I really don't like how that cable's rubbing. back to working. Now I don't know what happened to the foot on this however because one of these there was only three that came when I got this thing and only had three feet didn't have the four. At least all the screws are here and I do remember when I opened it it didn't seem like it uh, had a fault. In fact it looks like I've lost one of the little feet on it. That's a bit of a shame. Although if I were to actually use this thing, I'd probably want to replace it. Replace the feet on this thing. Yeah, there seems to be one missing. That's like a set. I mean, it has it on an angle. I shouldn't imagine that would cause too much problem. problems. Alright, let's try a, your uh, old style one of these. Oh yeah. So this would have definitely been built prior to um, SSDs becoming like popular. When was this one made? Is there a date code on here? No. Not that I can understand. Alright, well. This was my teardown and a decision about what I could potentially do with this in the future. A wiring diagram and... Don't just blindly follow this. If you are going to try to rework a power supply for one of these, which I highly recommend you don't, just simply because of the way this thing works, then yeah, the... It... This is just disappointing. Anyway. Yibba dee